segment of our call here, this is all being recorded, is we're going to be talking about the Mutual of Omaha, the Living Promise, which is their final expense app. It's called the Instant Decision e-application. Um, if you don't know about this, it's because it's brand new. Just came out a few days ago. Okay. And basically what it is, is it's a, it's a, it's the same e-app that we, that if you were familiar with it, um, on, on Mutual of Omaha's, on their website, and I believe it's through the, it's the iPipeline, but, um, and we're going to, we're going to play a video for you. But basically what happens to, to sum this up is that with Mutual of Omaha, and you can do this on a tablet, you don't have to take a laptop, but you do the e-application um, at the house. You type everything in and then you submit it. And then within um, a very short time, they're running the, the MIB and prescription check and you're getting an instant approval on an e-application. Okay. With the policy number. With the policy number. Okay, so this is so. I mean, I, I can see Jimmy in a, in you know probably in a very short time. I would say all of our applications are going to be like this at some point. You know what I mean? So let me uh, guys, let me queue up the video. Let me just pause uh, pause our recording for just a second. All right, here's the video. The vast majority of your Living Promise clients will appreciate the new automated underwriting e app. Try to ensure that you have cell service and or Wi-Fi is available as this is an online app. If connectivity is down, always make sure you have an application with you. You will still be able to use Aptical for any paper applications. Unlike Aptical, though, the automated underwriting tool does not close. It is available 24-7 for an instant decision before you leave the client's home. We've designed this online training module to fit the experienced to the novice. You can either watch the entire presentation from start to finish, or you can use the contents icon in the upper left corner of your screen to select any section of the module. To make it easier for you, we've identified the sections with the new features or that would be different from your current Living Promise eApp experience. We've also included key links and documents that will be mentioned during the presentation. You can find them in the file section. Make sure to bookmark this link as we will be updating this training module with future upgrades. So let's begin the tutorial by logging into Sales Professional Access. Remember, unless your marketing organization has a unique way to access the eApp, you will need to register on our website if you've never visited our site before. If you have already registered, simply log in. Once you've logged into Sales Professional Access, you will be taken to the main landing page. Select Electronic Applications from the Sales Tools menu on the left. From here, select Life from the menu on the left or simply scroll down to the Life e-application section. Here is where you'll find user guides for every one of the Life e-applications we currently offer. To begin, click the blue Start e-app button. You will now be entering the iPipeline e-application portal. From here, select Start new case. You'll begin by entering in the client name, date of birth, and his or her gender. Please note that any item in yellow is a required field. Once the proposed insurance information has been input, select the state the app will be signed in and the product type. Since Living Promise is a whole life product, you would select whole life. You will notice once you select the product type, the Find Available Products button appears. Click it to get a list of the e-applications available for that product. Now, click Select next to Living Promise. First, you will have to confirm that you are the writing producer for this e-app. Your name and producer number should appear grayed out. If that's you, click Select User. If not, click Submit as Guest. You will be required to select the general agent you are appointed under to sell Living Promise. Please note that every marketing organization you are appointed with to sell United of Omaha Life Insurance will appear in the drop-down list. An incorrect selection could delay issue. Sometimes you may be sharing the sale with another agent. If that's the case, select yes to the question, will there be an additional producer associated with this contract? Once you do, a new window will appear. You will be required to identify the percentage of comp each agent will get and the producer's name, date of birth, and the last four digits of his or her social security number. It always helps if you have the agent number associated with that producer. 
Please note that the percentages must equal 100%. Once this section is complete, click the Next button to proceed. Here, in the proposed insurance section, you will enter the client's personal information and contact information. You will notice that the e-application carried over the information that was already input in the case information section. As a reminder, all items highlighted in yellow are required fields. When you get to the contact information, you will notice that the street address is utilizing Google Geotracking for both a more accurate address entry, but also to save you time. Once you see the correct address appear in the dropdown, simply select it and the e-app will autofill the remaining fields. Once complete, you will need to identify if the client is a legal resident of the United States. If they are not, they are not eligible for coverage. Now input the client's driving information, tobacco status, and birth country. You will also be asked if there are any other names the client has used for medical records and if the proposed insured will also be the owner. Once complete, click Next. Here is where you will identify any enforced life insurance policies the client may have that are active. If they do not have any coverage, simply click No on both questions and then click Next. One improvement we made to this process is that we perform a Mutual of Omaha enforced life insurance search with the client information given. If any records are found, the following screen will appear. First, you will see that we tell you other policies have been found and then include required scripting that will give you authorization to pertinent information on every one of the policies that are enforced. Once you are authorized, click Yes to view the enforced list. All enforced policies will appear. You will need to click the Edit button next to each policy and input all of the required fields. Please note that you will have to retype zero in the accidental death benefit field, even though it may already be there. Once all policies are verified, then you will need to identify if there are any to be replaced. Select the Click Here to Add button to add any and all policies that need to be replaced. If your state has specific replacement rules, we have incorporated them into our e-application. Once all policies to be replaced have been captured, complete any and all required fields in this section. This includes explaining why the client wants to replace any enforced policies. Some states require you to ask if the client wishes their state-specific replacement form be read to them as they have specific language the state wishes the client to know. If the client wants the form read, simply click View Forms at the top of the screen to download the form. Otherwise, Click the checkbox stating the client does not wish the form read. Finally, identify all marketing material used in the replacement sale. Once complete, click Next to proceed to the Plan Information section. Shown here is the Plan Information section. This is where you will input the amount of insurance applied for. You will see a reminder that the amount must be within product limits. One additional enhancement to this section is that the maximum coverage available, the amount shown in the grayed out field, now adjusts based on the amount of existing Mutual of Omaha Life coverage the client wishes to keep in force. In the scenario shown on the screen, the client had $23,000 of Living Promise coverage already in force that was not to be replaced. As a result, the maximum coverage allowed is only $17,000. You will no longer have to worry about misquoting the maximum coverage available for a specific client. Once the face amount has been entered, click Next. Welcome to our Living Promise eApp is a client information verification tool. Using public records, we verify the information the client provided you and provide you with an opportunity to correct any information where we found a possible discrepancy. If we found a discrepancy between what was entered and what was on record, you will automatically be brought to this screen. You will need to either confirm the information is correct by clicking Yes or correct it by clicking No and then providing the correct information in the field that will appear. Once complete, click Confirm to lock in the information and then click Next. If we found no discrepancies, this section will be skipped and you will automatically proceed to the Insurance History section. To begin the underwriting review process, United of Omaha must access MIB and prescription drug information. To do this, the proposed insured must sign a HIPAA authorization form. This section will walk you through the in-person signature process. 
As you complete both this and the underwriting sections, please make sure you review all information you input for accuracy. You will not be able to change the information once you have completed the underwriting section. To begin, click the blue Lock Application button. Once clicked, you will get a verification that the application has been locked and that you can proceed. As we are demonstrating the in-person signature process, you will choose the Present field. Once selected, click Next. Once you see the HIPAA e-signature disclosure screen, you will need to pass the laptop or tablet to the client as the next few screens need to be completed by them. The client will first choose one of the three proofs of identification to verify that the signature given is from the actual insured. They will input the answer to the verification question in that field that appears. Once complete, they click Next. The client will then review the terms and conditions of the e-signature process and the HIPAA authorization disclosure. To view the entire authorization, they will need to scroll to the bottom of the screen. Once he or she have reviewed the disclosure statement, United of Omaha provides them with the opportunity to download the application as is and the corresponding HIPAA authorization. To do so, they click the Review Application button. Please note that this is required to proceed. Once clicked, a pop-up window with the application will appear. If the client does not wish to download the application, they simply click Close. Once the pop-up window is closed, the I have reviewed the additional forms checkbox is activated and needs to be selected. Once checked, Next will become active and they will click it to proceed. Now it's time to apply the e-signature. If the application is being taken on a non-touchpad device, like a laptop with no touchscreen, the client simply clicks his or her name and then inputs the city the application was signed in. If the app is being taken on a tablet, an iPad, or a laptop with an enabled touchscreen, a signature pad will appear and the client can use a stylus or a finger to physically sign. Once complete, simply press the tab key or click outside of the city field and the Apply e-signature button appears. The client clicks the button to apply the e-signature and then clicks Next. At this time, they should hand the laptop back to you to complete the underwriting portion. We have now come to the new underwriting section. As before, the questions are broken up into Part 1 and Part 2. It is important that as you read these questions, you read them in their entirety and clearly enough for the client to understand and respond. As you proceed, either click yes or no based on the client's response. If the wrong answer is accidentally selected, don't worry. Simply click the change answer link before you leave this section and change it appropriately. Once you have answered all the part one questions, please click continue. Once clicked, scroll to the top of the screen and answer all of the part two questions. Please note that if one of these questions is answered yes, additional questions may appear. These are follow-up questions to better identify the specific condition and its severity. Again, please remember it is important that you read the questions in their entirety and clearly enough for the client to understand and respond. After you ask all the questions, click Continue. Now remember that the client authorized Mutual of Omaha to run the MIB and prescription drug information. We also are reviewing any related records that may be of use from our Medicare Supplement Division. While the questions in Part 1 and Part 2 were being asked, Mutual of Omaha was compiling that information to determine if any additional underwriting questions needed to be asked. If there is any additional clarification needed for a certain medical condition or a prescription drug, a third section called Supplemental Questions will appear. These are specific to the client and based on the answers given in Part 1 and Part 2, and the results from the third-party information we obtained. As before, read the questions as they are written on the screen and answer yes or no accordingly. Once complete, click Continue. The final part of the underwriting section is the summary page. Scroll to the top of the screen and review all of the questions one last time. Remember that once you click Continue, you cannot go back to change any of the answers. The underwriting assessment begins once you leave this section. If all answers are correct and you're ready to proceed, click Continue. You will see the Health Assessment Completion Confirmation Notice. Click Next to proceed to the next section of the application. Now, let's add some beneficiaries. 
Click the Click Here to Add button and add all primary beneficiaries and follow the according prompts. Remember that while only yellow fields are required, it is also a good idea to include the date of birth for all beneficiaries. Once complete, click Save. Continue to add any additional primary beneficiaries. Once complete, then identify if the client would like to add any contingent beneficiaries. If so, follow the prompts that are exactly like the primary beneficiary section. Once all beneficiaries are identified, click Next. Welcome to the Premium Summary section. Here is where you will get a preliminary review to help you and the client determine if a face amount change is needed or if the client would like to purchase the Accidental Death Benefit Rider, available on level plans only. As you can see on the screen, this application is tracking level death benefit and the client requested a face amount of $30,000. If, after the preliminary review, the client wanted to lower the face amount, the agent would simply change the amount listed in the face amount field. Please note, you can only lower the face amount at this time. Consequently, if the application looked like it was tracking graded death benefit, the message would change slightly to include the description of the graded plan and the face amount would automatically lower to the maximum allowed for graded policies. The agent also has the ability to lower the face amount further should the premium be too high and further changes are needed to save the case. It is a good idea to have a mobile quote tool handy for this section. Remember, this is not the final decision. This should only be used as a guide to adjust the desired face amount and to determine if the accidental death benefit rider could be included. Once all plan features have been completed, click the Calculate Modal Premium button to update the modal premium totals below. Select the desired payment mode and complete any additional prompts. Once complete, click Next. Since monthly modal premium was selected as the payment mode, the payer's bank information is needed. Identify the payer and complete the subsequent information. Remember to write down the routing number and account number as you will have to enter it in twice and it will not be easy to see what you wrote the first time. Next, determine what day or weekday the client wants payments to be deducted each month. Finally, determine if the client would like the payment draft date to be done immediately upon issue or on a specific date. Remember, the initial draft must happen no later than 35 days from when the application is taken. Once complete, click Next. Once all banking information has been captured, the client is now ready to sign the application and submit it to Mutual of Omaha. As with the HIPAA authorization section, click the Lock Application and Proceed to the Signature Process button. Once you receive confirmation the app has been locked, click Next. Should the client wish, he or she can have the final application sent via email. Simply select the client's name and provide an email address and a four-digit PIN. Please note that the default PIN is the last four digits of the insured Social Security number. If they do not wish for the final application to be emailed to them, simply click Next. In the Signature Methods section, choose the signature process appropriate for the situation. Since this is the in-person signature process, you would select Present, then click Next. As before, pass the laptop to the client once you get to the e-signature disclosure section. The client will choose a proof of identification from the list in the drop-down menu and provide the answer to that question. It can be the same one that was given in the HIPAA authorization section. Once complete, Click Next. The next section is called Welcome Consent. Here, the insured will review the terms and conditions of an electronic application and also view and download the buyer's guide and the application. Simply scroll down to the bottom of the page and first click on Additional Forms to view and download the buyer's guide. Once complete, close out of the pop-up window and you will see Review Your Application button is now active. Click that button and a second pop-up window will appear with the application completed to this point. Once viewed and downloaded, close the pop-up window and you will see the I have reviewed the terms and conditions field is now active. The client will check the box and then the next button will appear. Now the client will apply his or her signature. If it not, I think it may be buffering, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if you want to retry it.
Hmm. See if I can go to the. Well, that's weird that it stopped working. Well, I'll just guide them through here, Jill. <laughs> so after the final signature, it comes back and um, it'll give you a decision with a policy number, but it also gives you the opportunity to adjust the uh, face amount. So if let's say, for example, they come back and uh, they approve it for 20,000, your client says, you know what? You know, maybe they want a little bit more, they want 25, or maybe they want a little less, they want 15. You're able to adjust it at the end. Um, you know, the other the other possibilities, it might come back, let's say, as a graded. So you're submitting it level. If they can approve it graded, it'll come back and it'll let you know. And at that point, it gives you the opportunity to talk with the client and, you know, adjust the face mount if needed. Um, it may also come back with a um, turndown, so it might be a decline. Uh, the fourth option is that it's uh, referred to underwriting for further review. If that happens, that, that means that they had something pulled up on the MIB or prescription history that maybe they need clarification. Um, you're going to need at that point to conduct a phone interview. However, you're not going to be able to do it on the spot it's going to take 24 hours for that to uh, get uh, sent into the queue for the underwriter um so anyway just just those are the four options as that, that are going to happen at the end of the, that signature yeah um so the one thing too in in talking to our rep in in baltimore it sounds like too when you do the e-application um the 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 only time you're going to get where you have to do a phone interview if there's a let's see here if it picked up once the insured signs and the producer okay. statement appears take the device back and answer all of the questions in the producer statement once complete click next now you will review the terms and conditions then scroll down to the bottom of the page click the review your application button to view and download the application once viewed and downloaded, close the pop-up window and you will see the I have reviewed the terms and conditions field is now active. Check the box and then the next button will appear. Now, apply your e-signature. If a non-touch enabled device is being used, you will simply select your name and then identify the city where the app was signed in. Finally, click apply e-signature. If the device being used is touch enabled, a signature pad will appear on the screen and you will use a finger or stylus to sign. Once complete, click apply a signature. You will be able to download the completed application by clicking print signed application. Finally, click submit to United of Omaha. Once you click Submit to United of Omaha, the screen will refresh and you will see the client's policy number and the final decision on the case appear below the Submit button. There will be four possible decisions that will appear below the policy number. Approved with level benefit, approved with graded benefit, refer to underwriting where you or your client will be contacted for more information, or declined. In this instance, the client was approved at level death benefit. Once submitted and a final decision is made, you will receive an email confirmation with the policy number. The submitted application will then be automatically put into a queue where underwriters will complete any outstanding administrative requirements and then issue the policy if approved. Once processed, you will receive an email confirmation with the final decision for your records. One form that is not currently built into the eApp is the Release of Medical Information form. This form, signed by the client, allows the agent to receive personal information on the case, such as prescriptions. If the case comes back as graded, refer, or decline, it's a good idea to have the client sign this form so you can better assist them. We have included a PDF of this form in the Files section of this training module. Thank you for watching our training module on the new automated underwriting eApp. To access the eApp, as well as all other forms, reports, training, and marketing materials, visit Sales Professional Access by clicking on the link to the left. To learn more about Living Promise, please click on the training video to the right.
Finally, if you have any additional questions, do not hesitate to contact sales support or your sales team from Mutual of Omaha. Thank you for watching our training module on the new automated underwriting e-app. To access Awesome. Jimmy, anything else that you want to add um, to this? Mm, well, I tell you what, guys, uh, this is really cool because if you're in front of the client, what you're eliminating is the, uh, the hassle of missing a signature or maybe you filled out something incorrectly or maybe the underwriter could not read your handwriting. Um, and then now they're telling you on the paper app that you need to go back out, get something initialed or sig signed or redated, re-signed. I mean, I think we've all experienced that. You do this at the point of sale, you're done. You know, um, you, you also don't have to worry about, you know, is it approved or is it not approved? Um, and I'll tell you what, if I had a turn down, uh, if I come back with the decline, well, then maybe you can explore that option, you know, what what the causes are with the client and then maybe resubmit with a different carrier um, that might be a little bit more liberal with their underwriting. You know, so, I mean, it just depends on what the, the medical condition is. So, uh, for example, I don't know, let's say they had AFib as an example, uh, then, you know, you can go with Forrester's or you know whatever the scenario is but i mean you're getting a decision at the point of sale and you know um if you need to you know change carriers you can do it right then and there instead of having to try to track your client down a few days later and go back out and trying to re-meet with them so i i think you know it might it might take you a little bit more time up front to process the e-app but it's going to save you a ton of time on the back end Right. No, I agree. The, guys, the only the, the only thing is the only way you're going to get comfortable with this, honestly, is just go out and do it. That's the only way you're going to get comfortable with it is do it. So my recommendation is if you're going to try the if you're going to go for the e app, um, make sure that you have paper applications with you as a backup, just in case you do get stuck and it's not going through. You lose your internet connection. Now the other thing too that 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 I'm kind of understanding from our rep is that you're also eliminating, I believe, Jimmy, you're, you're, you're eliminating the random PHI from what I understand yes. is that the only time it's going to be a required interview is that if they just can't make a decision, like there's something on the MIB or prescription history that is, you know, it, it's some type of uh, red flag, if you will. There's not enough information to decline it, but it must be a, a multiple use prescription or maybe it's the date and they just need to have a conversation with the with with the client. That's the only time you're going to have to do a phone interview. Um, we don't have a lot of experience at this as as of yet, but my anticipation is this is going to be very rare. I'd say 95% of the time you're going to get a decision. It's going to come back either approved, graded, or declined. Okay. Um, so I think this is a, I, I think this is a, an, an amazing tool. Um, I would definitely get up to speed on it and start using it as me, as immediately um, as possible. Um, but that's it, man. If you, unless you got anything else, man, let's get everybody. Um, off the call, we did run a few minutes over. My apologies for that. But I think this was um, very, very, very important information to get out to you guys. That's it. I'm I'm good. Y'all guys have a great weekend. Amazing. Thanks, everybody, for being on the call. Thanks, Jimmy. Hey, hey Joe, I want, I want to say one last thing. Sure. How about them cowboys? I know, dude. <laughs> I tell you what, man. I... I, I turned the game on late and it was 10 to nothing. I'm like, what? <laughs> How's that happening? So uh, amazing job by the uh, Dallas Cowboys uh, of shutting down Drew Brees and the, the, the Saints, man. They play some great defense. Congrat congratulations there, Jimmy. All right, guys, everybody take care. Bye-bye.